All right, Sparky, we have here the Velvet Glove 2010. Tell us what we should do to prepare to enjoy this wine. Is, is there a certain process? I mean, this is just a, a great, fantastic wine. What do we do to get ourselves ready? Well, the super exciting thing for us is about that. Whenever we prepare our wines, whatever we do to prepare our wines so that they're ready to drink straight away, we do the Molly Duca shake. The Molly Duca now, shake. Now, is that something you do to just kind of twist, or is that? Well, it's funny, and you're going to see that tonight. Is in actual fact, when when I when we, we always ask volunteers to come up and do the Molly Duca shake, and I always do this little bit of a dance move thing like this, right? <laughs> now, I can't dance. We've got a wine called Two Left Feet, which is me because I can't dance at all, right? So. Um, and, and uh, but uh, for us, no, and it always worries people that they're going to have to dance, but it's not. It's it's just a straight process that we do. So how it works very simply. So you'll see with all of our all of our wines, we have a screw cap on our bottles. How the Molly Duca shake works very simply is this: pour some wine into your glass until the wine is about halfway down the shoulder. Now you'll see this is the 2010 Velvet Glove. Put your screw cap back on. Turn your bottle upside down. I tell people it's important to do it in that order. It's also important to make sure that that cap is on top. Make sure the cap's <laughs> on, right? Make sure the cap's on. And then you just give the wine, I tell them, a nice, gentle Molly Duca shake. Right? I always tell people it's always important when you're preparing your Molly Dukas, right? Never rough your Molly Dukas up. But I'm joking because you need to give them a really good shake. Take the cap off, let the nitrogen out, give them another good Molly Duca shake. All right. What you'll see here on the top of our wines is you'll see a foam layer. This foam layer is nitrogen. Right. We use nitrogen in our wine making to minimise the amount of sulphites. Sulphites causes the, um, the allergy, the sure, asthma type reactions. Sure, sure. Right. So we use nitrogen in our wine making to minimise the sulphites. Right. What, what nitrogen does though, so if you think about flavour being a big round ball like this, nitrogen flattens the back end of the round ball. As soon as you do the Molly Duca shake, it releases the nitrogen and the flavour pops back out to its full size again. You'll see that foam layer settles down to a creamy cafe latte type character. As soon as it settles down to that, your Molly Dukas are ready to drink. So, here's a comparison. This is the two left feet without the shake. And let me show you the difference that the Molly Dukas shake makes. So this now is the uh, Velvet Glove with the Molly Dukas shake on this side here. So you can see this one here, Velvet Glove with the Molly Dukas shake, Velvet Glove without the Molly Dukas shake. If you taste the difference between the two, you'll see that this wine here, the Velvet Glove with the Molly Dukas shake, is immediately more aromatic immediately more velvety in its texture and immediately more creamy across the palate. Have a go. Do we taste it? Absolutely. Okay, here we go. Have a look at the have a look at it without the shake first. Great aromatics with that. It's just smooth and beautiful. Not quite as profound. That's not, right. Not, not quite, you know, it, it, this, the, after the shake, that this seems to kind of have, it allows waves of these aromas to kind of fill the glass here. Yep. You can tell it's there, but it's subdued. That's right. And the palate, you think it should be the same? No, the, the palate will be much richer, yep. much creamier in its texture, much more, much more balanced in its over style. Boy, is that fantastic. This is a great wine. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. This is just an, an amazing, amazing wine. I mean, lush, beautiful, all the way back. It's interesting. You're absolutely right. Yeah. With well, the one that wasn't, that wasn't shaken, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit sharper. Yep. Um, the tannins are a little bit sharper. The flavors are a little bit sharper. They're not smooth. They're not rounded. Whereas the shake, um, and clearly you, you, you've got this down to an art and a science here. Yep. Everything is integrated perfectly. There are no rough edges. There's nothing sharp along the way. That's right. And that's that's exactly what we find. We share that every single night. Uh, we know when we're out sharing with people. I always tell people do the comparison, and especially like in restaurants. All right, when I'm talking to sommeliers, when I'm talking to wait staff, I'm saying, do the Molly Duca shake, but take two glasses. Leave this glass here, say to people, if they don't know about it, say, the bottles all say, do the Molly Duca shake. Share with them the not shaken and the shaken. They can see the difference. It shows it's incredible. And then it actually creates other excitement that goes on around the restaurant as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, with a wine like this, what's the, what do you expect the life of the age of this wine to be for the Velvet Glow? So it's great to drink now, all right, I can guarantee that, and we're going to drink it tonight as well, but it'll last as long as you've got proper selling, celery. Uh, the good thing about it now is it's got a screw cap on it, so you don't even have to lie it down. Stand it up in your cellar, it's fine. And as long as you've got proper celery, it'll last as long as you can keep your hands off it. 
Have you gone back and tried some of the 05s, the 06s at this point? They're aging well, doing fine as far as uh, you can tell? Fantastic. We did, we did the uh, 2005 Carnival of Love. We did that in uh, Singapore a couple of days ago and uh, with, with a friend of ours and it was looking... We went back, we did, we did all of the 2010 wine and we did the 2005 Carnival and the 2002 Integrity from Mark Phillips. And both of those, the 2005 and the 2002, were stunning. They were, they were really good. Well, here we go once again. An absolutely top-notch wine, top collectible. If you have some, enjoy these now or lay them down for the, for the years to come. And if not, go out and find yourself some. An absolutely outstanding wine, one of the finest wines I've ever tasted. And I think probably the finest Australian wine I've ever tasted. Great, great job. Great effort. Cheers. Thank you.